What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Paulo Costa goes off on Hamza Chimaev. Since Drakus Duplessis' win over Sean Strickland, the middleweight division has been left without a clear number one contender. While the champ has indicated that he wants a fight with Israel Adesanya next, Hamza Chimaev has also maintained that after his win over Kamaru Usman, he should be next in line for a crack at the title. Heading into this weekend's UFC 298 fight between Paulo Costa and Robert Whittaker, many have wondered whether the winner of the fight could be next in line for a crack at the belt. While speaking to media members, Paulo Costa was asked about Chimaev's place among the division. Yeah, of course, everybody knows I don't like the guy, but I don't think too much, too much people, many people take, take he's so serious anymore. You know, he just stopped the fight. He, he didn't beat anybody in the middleweight division, top top uh, contenders or something, or even top 15. He didn't beat anybody in the top team, uh, top 15 middleweight division. How we can take this guy serious? You know, he barely could beat Usman in 10 days short notes. Usman was U Usman is a weatherweight. He didn't carry weight to middleweight. And everybody saw that fight. I was there. But after beat with Cabro, I I will not want to 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 hear his name. F him. He need to do something. He need to beat somebody at top, at least top ten in the middleweight. Although Costa wants nothing to do with Chimaev, it'll be interesting to see if the UFC has other plans depending on how things play out at UFC 298. Next up, let's take a look at. Sean O'Malley disrespects Ilya Toporia. Ilya Toporia has continued to express confidence leading up to the biggest fight of his career at UFC 298, indicating that he believes he'll make quick work of long-standing featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky. Given how much trash Toporia has talked in the lead up to the fight, many have wondered whether he may be digging himself into a deep hole by setting expectations so high. During a recent episode of the Timbo Sugar Show, bantamweight champion Sean O'Malley weighed in. Ilya, is he, is he gonna get the fucking job done? Ilya versus Bolt. He better I, hope he fucking does, because he's talking a lot of games. He's talking a lot of shit. He got a documentary coming out. He's got a movie coming out. He's calling out Conor McGregor. Like, dude, if he goes and loses to Volk, he's irrelevant. And he's, I'm not going to call him out. And he, he should be no, thanking for sure. me for talking about him. Of course, if Toporia wins, the expectation is that he and Sugar Sean O'Malley will look to fight one another. For his part, Topuria has no doubts in his mind that he will get the job done on Saturday night. Speaking to media members on Wednesday, he explained, I'm going to do something to him and I'm going to finish him off. And he's also, I understand that he doesn't have knockout power. I have knockout power. He goes on volume. That's how he wins his fights. He's not a finisher. He doesn't when the fight goes to the ground. He's not known for finishing, so I'm a different breed. With fight night right around the corner, it'll be interesting to see if Topuria can live up to the high expectations he set for himself. Next, let's take a look at Daniel Cormier reveals horrible news. In a surprising turn of events, ESPN has suddenly pulled the plug on the DC and RC show, leaving fans with plenty of questions after the pair announced news on the latest episode of the show. As Cormier explained in the pair's final episode, Clark, who played in the NFL, had been embraced by the MMA community despite starting as somewhat of an outsider when the show first began, evolving into a true fight fan thanks in part to the DC and RC show. In a post on social media, Cormier wrote, Guys, make sure you watch the last DC and RC. What a time I had doing the show with RC. Love seeing his growth and his passion for MMA. Today, we filmed our last show. Make sure you guys check it out, live now. While many were surprised by the news, the MMA guru pointed out something interesting. The last episode of DC and RC that was released prior to the news of the show's cancellation was the UFC 297 post-fight episode, where Clark called on the UFC to cut the women's bantamweight division after a lackluster bout between Raquel Pennington and Myra Bueno Silva. He wrote, In last week's episode of DC and RC, RC was saying that the UFC should cut women's bantamweight if Pennington versus Silva is really the peak skill that division has to offer. While DC laughed, now the ESPN show comes to a sudden end out of nowhere in this very next episode. So far, there's been no word from ESPN in regards to what prompted the show's cancellation. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at UFC Fight Updates. With Fight Week underway for UFC 298, let's take a look at some UFC Fight Updates, starting with a change to the UFC Vegas 88 card on March 16th. According to Nolan King and Farah Hanoon, 
Brad Riddell has been forced out of his scheduled fight with Tiago Moises. While Moises currently doesn't have an opponent, the expectation is that the UFC will find him a replacement given that there's still several weeks before the card. The following week, Dushko Todorovic has withdrawn from his scheduled fight on the UFC Vegas 89 card as a result of an injury sustained in training. Fortunately, the UFC has shuffled things around, booking Edmund Shabazian a replacement opponent. According to Team Iridium, AJ Dobson will be stepping in on short notice in hopes of building on an August victory over Tafan and Chukwi. Last but certainly not least, according to Team Iridium, Lando Venata has reportedly been forced out of his scheduled bout on April 27th. Fortunately, the UFC has already found a replacement, booking James Yontop to fight Gabe Green, with Dana White indicating that he'll be announcing the UFC 300 main event after UFC 298 this weekend, expect some big fight updates soon. Next, let's take a look at Henry Cejudo reveals sad news. After dropping a decision to Aljamain Sterling last year, Henry Cejudo briefly considered retirement before then deciding to continue on with one last championship run. Ahead of his upcoming UFC 298 title eliminator against Marab Devashvili, Cejudo indicated that if he loses, he will ride off into the sunset for good. He spoke with media members on Wednesday to discuss the high-stakes showdown, indicating that although his ultimate goal is to go up to 145 pounds in pursuit of a third title, with a loss on Saturday, he'll be hanging up his gloves. This is all or nothing. And I told the team, I sat with the team, I was like, hey guys, I'm, I'm here to, it's either gold or bust. Like, I either win it all or I'm not going to have it at all and I'm out, I'm done. So, I am putting that timeline, that pressure on me. Because I do take this sport serious. And people are like, oh, you retired? I was like, dude, I've done everything there is to do. What the f***? Like, what do I got to prove? Like, now it's just, it's, it's, it's a motivation more kind of motivated by a little bit of a little bit of anger you know kind of pissed at myself a little bit but it's still motivated leading up to the fight Cejudo has drawn considerable criticism for firing his longtime coach Eric Albaracin on camera during the filming of the countdown to UFC 298 show although the two reunited during fight week Putting themselves alongside great player-coach duos such as Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson, Albaracin cleared the air on the MMA Hour, indicating that the clip on the UFC 298 Countdown show was indeed real and not a skit. What do you mean that? That was real. So that was shot in early December. And then what if happened? If you follow me on my Instagram, you would see that I'm in Brazil. Yes. For the last two months with Paolo and Patricio. That was real. It was real. I hadn't seen Henry. Since after the fight with with Al Jermaine, he came to Brazil to the Pitbull Brothers in Natal. He even trained a little bit. And then I hadn't seen him until that count, that day of the countdown. Given the situation, the expectation is that the topic will come up during the UFC 298 press conference. Next, let's take a look at Drake's Duplessis won't be champion for long, according to UFC Fighter. While South Africa's Drake's Duplessis currently sits atop the middleweight division, Roman Kopilov doesn't think he will remain there for long. Ahead of his upcoming fight with Anthony Hernandez on Saturday, the streaking contender took aim at the champ while discussing the bout. As he also explained, with a win over Hernandez, he plans to call out former middleweight champion Sean Strickland, who he hopes takes his call out seriously. You know, yeah, middleweight is is a one of the toughest division. This is this is a great division. Everybody is pretty tough in, in here. Uh, top five, I think, uh, when it comes to the champion, anybody in the top five could become a champ soon. Uh, I'm not sure what to say about the champion. For some reason, I have a feeling he's not gonna stay a champ for a way long time. From the sounds of things, Kopilov isn't the only fighter who is skeptical about Duplessis' reign as champion. Speaking to media members on Wednesday, Paulo Costa weighed in. It's hard to say, right? But I don't believe he's gonna hold that for so long time. Too much, too much time. As Costa explained, after his upcoming fight with Robert Whittaker, he believes that he should be next in line for a shot at the title with a win. Given that Duplessis seems to have his sights set on a title defense against Israel Adesanya in Africa, it's unclear whether or not the UFC will view the winner of Saturday's fight as the number one contender. Next up, let's take a look at MMA Community Roasts Ian Gary for Sean Strickland comments. As many members of the MMA community expected, Ian Gary's recent series of back and forths with Sean Strickland has become a major talking point ahead of his fight with Jeff Neal on Saturday. While speaking with media members on Wednesday, the undefeated Irish star took aim at the former middleweight champ for his previous comments. You're right, my wife was called a pedophile by Sean Strickland. No woman ever deserves to be called that, right? That's the truth. My son, the, the people that follow Sean Strickland 
commented on a couple of my photos at the very start of all this hate saying, is the kid even his? I should never have to hear that. Now those two things, they emotionally get me. And I'll get mine back. I'll thump the f***ing mouth off Sean Strickland one day and there'll be nothing he can do about it. Ahead of the event, Dana White weighed in on the situation as a whole while speaking with Kevin Iola. I think it was messing with him for a little, for a little while there, but you know, you have to get, when you're in this business, you have to get to a point where you block out all that bullshit cares what the internet's saying or what the media is saying. Focus on what you need to do and and focus on on uh, Jeff Neal is what you need to worry about on Saturday night. But the MMA community was quick to weigh in on Gary's comments, with one fan writing, So just to be clear, your children are off limits, but Magny's kid is fair game during a custody battle. Also, I'm sure Neil's mother really enjoyed you plastering her son's mugshot on a t-shirt. Another added, don't talk then cry when they talk back, simple. One Irish fan offered their perspective, writing, as an Irishman, I really want to like him, but I just can't. I can't put my finger on it. Is it he tries too hard to be different? As one member of the MMA community pointed out, Lil Bro pulled out of the press conference with Strickland though. Despite what Gary said, not everyone is sold. As one fan wrote, Strickland would beat the brakes off of him. Entire MMA world knows that. One fan referenced Strickland's ongoing feud with Jake Paul, writing, Pretty sure Sean Strickland will invite you and Jake Paul into the desert for a last man standing contest. As another fan joked, Pump the mouth, I can't tell if that's a threat or if he's flirting. Depending on how things play out on Saturday, it'll be interesting to see if Gary winds up calling out Strickland. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.